All right, we're gonna give this a whirl. I just repaired the back wheel. It's the 56 tooth sprocket. You guys gotta see how fast this thing is. It's awesome. Can't wait to get a crank in this thing. I can pedal. All right.
That thing flies. Don't get it. Doesn't make sense. The uh, chain's coming off. Alright, so here's where we're at. Yesterday I stole the seat off that, put it on here, just for now, because my stuff still is not going Alright, I put one of these there, because, you know, didn't have a crank either for pedaling. So, I put a guard over the part of the exhaust that's up here. Um, this works out perfect. I had no issues getting burned, anything like that. This this worked out great. So, my biggest problem I had yesterday, I'm calling it the day of chaos. We learned all kinds of new stuff with the four stroke. Uh, <clears throat> one, I had to put a chain tensioner. I just, I had no choice. No matter what I did from point A to B here, the chain would jump. It was random. I really didn't have a point. I thought maybe like the axle was moving or something, you know, but nothing. I mean, no matter what I did, it would jump. And it was like this side, this side, this side. It, it, it just, it made no sense. And then I got to thinking later, this is an aluminum plate that's like all the way across. And when it would start out, uh, you know, from like a dead stop, there's a lot of stress on it. And I think what happens is, is the aluminum moves a little bit and it changes the, the chain. Like it'll, it'll vibrate it and throw it off. It was weird. So anyways, what I did is I put the chain tension in here. And I think if this vibrates a little bit, what it is is the chain tensioner is acting like a stop and it won't let it jump. So I didn't have any problems after I put the chain tensioner on like that. So I guess that's how I got to do it on this. I'll probably change it out with something different. But for now, I mean, that's where it's at. I, I may actually just weld an aluminum block. Got like a slot in it and just you know we'll see but uh yeah so i got my uh post set up here too i'll have to show you guys that another time but anyways another thing i learned about this which is kind of interesting uh here's some gears <sighs> So here's like a uh, 36 tooth, right? It's just 36. Yeah, that's a 36. 
just in comparison. So, this probably would not run on the four-stroke build. I would have to be going like 15 miles an hour pedaling before I could even let on the uh, throttle with something like this. And it would probably take off and do 70 miles an hour and kill me. <laughs> Alright, so here's the 44 tooth I had. I drilled the holes in it. And this worked. It was alright. It was a lot of stress on the clutch though, taking off. And I'm not pedaling either. And I said, oh, that kind of sucks. I mean, once it got up going on this, it was great. Like, I was probably doing like 40 miles an hour on this thing. It, it, and I was like, okay, that's kind of weird. I didn't expect that at all. So, everyone said you could put a 56 tooth on a four stroke or a 60 tooth even. And I'm like, yeah, right. They're like, no, no, you'll, you'll get about 35, 38 miles an hour out of this 56 tooth sprocket. And, you know, just from experience with that, I, I put it on the YD100 there, a 56 tooth. I'm doing like 18 miles an hour. Top speed, wide open. You put it on this one, literally hit 35 miles an hour, about three quarters of a <laughs> of a throttle. <laughs> so I was kind of like puzzled at first, but really, when you get down to it, I mean, here here's the the principle to it. Your transmission in these, at least this one is, it's 15 to one. So every time that motor spins 15 times. The output shaft spins once. And then I have a 10 tooth gear to a 40 tooth sprocket on this. So actually the motor at 10,000 RPM would be like 660 RPM coming out from that 15 to 1 ratio. And then, you know, 10 to 4, you divide that by 4. And then you would take your tires, diameter, do all that. And you could actually figure out how fast this would go. And this bike with all this as is wide open will do about 38 miles an hour. Something in that area. So, with the 42 sprocket. With the uh, 36 there... Um, I could hit about 44 miles an hour, roughly. Somewhere in the area, 42, 44. And it's like, you know, wide open, perfect conditions, slightly downhill. <laughs> so. All right, so you're looking at like 2 to 1. And then 1 to 5. Yeah, I said that completely ass backwards. So you're looking at uh, two times one, then you're looking at five times one. So you are way ahead on RPM range versus the two strokes. So this actually equals about like that, believe it or not. I hit about 35 miles an hour on this thing, about three quarters of a throttle. <laughs> Which is amazing. I, I did not expect that. So, kind of interesting. <clears throat> so, all in all, I mean, this worked out pretty well so far. <clears throat> I call uh, yesterday the uh, trials of doom and tribulation. Because <clears throat> with uh, the chain jumping... Ended up uh, jacking my spoke covers all up. They're all tore up. The chain dropped in, just chewed them all the hell. I did screw up one spoke in there. Something. I believe it's, I don't know, I think it's like this one or something. I have to look. I got to pull all these out and see what happened. Carnage. But yeah, uh, two spokes got bent, so I'll probably just replace those and... All that fun stuff. 
We'll make sure the tires all rebalanced. <clears throat> but learning experience, you know. But yeah, I, I could not get away from that chain tensioner. Yeah, no matter what I did, I just I ended up having to put one. But all in all, I mean this all worked out. So Alright, that's where I'm at. Peace. Alright. So, so anyways, here's the carnage. These aren't so bad. And we start getting into bad ones. So, and the bad, oh, that one's really bad. So, anyways, we're gonna replace those. Get this off, break it down, replace them, rebalance it. And we will go from there. But, yeah. I did jack quite a few, uh, spokes in there. And believe it or not, the tire's pretty damn balanced still, which is hilarious. I would expect this thing to be wobbling everywhere. Alright. One other funny thing. I don't know if I can get it up by hand. The, uh, freaking freewheel one spun. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen that before. This was tight as can be. So, interesting. Alright. Cover came off. All right, so I got the uh, spoke job done here. I uh, rebalanced it and stuff, put it back on. <clears throat> I had something interesting. I have nothing on this. <laughs> and it actually unspun, and I tightened it, like, super tight when I put that on. So that was kind of interesting. I've never had a freewheel <laughs> come off. So... I mean, I, I had it on there, and I literally tightened the crap out of it. But anyways, I did one, two, three, four, oops, that's four, five, six, seven, eight spokes. So, uh, but anyways, I was replacing, hold on. So yeah, the uh, got in there and it just gnarled the crap out of them in the chain set. So yeah, you wouldn't want to reuse anything like this. I mean, like, I guess you could get away with one of these, but one that's like this. <laughs> Let's see if this will focus. Anyways, I've seen people straighten these. Let's see if I can show it. See how it's like all chewed from the chain? Oh, there we go. It's hard to see on the camera. But you would never want to reuse one of these, even if you bent it perfectly straight, because it will snap on you. <laughs> so you're better off just to replace it I mean we have the technology so alright 